<laughs> I, I, you got me nervous, man. <laughs> oh, man, you cool. You've been doing this forever. All right. One, two, one, two. You're now tuned in to the world famous wake-up show. You are now rocking with the best. You know what we do here, man. We bring you that real raw hip-hop. But also it's called a wake-up show because oftentimes we try to get you that information on cats you don't even know about. <laughs> so we got a legendary cat in the studio right now. The Freeway Rick Ross, not the one you may know, <clears throat> but the original Rick Ross. Say what's up, my man. Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing out there? Yeah, this your man, the real Rick Ross. So you you know about the Wake Up Show, man? Just get, get you know, give me a little quick breakdown, man. Man, do I know about the Wake Up Show? Uh, I mean, really, when when I really started listening to hip hop, really, really serious, I was in the pen. Right. And uh, the Wake Up Show is what we listen to in the pen. I mean, y'all had the raw, the uncut. You know, we heard guys that didn't have a record out come on the air and, and, and rap their stuff. And it gave us a chance to pick, you know, who we thought was going to be the next star. So, uh, I mean, when me and Harry, when, when, before he started Death Row with Suge, we were laying in the cell listening to the Wake Up Show. So, you know, that's how far back uh, uh, I go with the Wake Up Show. Harry, oh, wait, 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 wait. That's another, that's another character that, that, you know... We got to get into all this, man. So, Harry O is the original founder of Death Row. Is that correct? Uh, one of them. One of them? Yeah, one of them. I said one of them. But me and him were sellies okay. when, they, when they started the whole thing. So, Okay, okay. Now, man, this is like, you know, it's one of them things, man, where you always thought we, we going to meet one day, but we didn't know what, you know what I'm saying? We don't know what the circumstances are going to be. Yeah, yeah. So, well, well, you know, destiny is, is, is supposed to happen, and, and, and that's what this is right here. This is destiny. So, you know, my, my first thing I got to ask you, man, is how real can we get with the conversation like this? Because, you know, over the years, you hear so many rumors and so many people talking about, you know, um, what this cat has done, what he hasn't done. Let's don't hold and, no punches. Let's go all and, the way No, with no, it. there's a danger in it, man. Let me tell you why I'm, I'm a little nervous, man, because um, years ago, we had a situation with this cat named Biggie Smalls. And Biggie came on the show. Let me see if you can still hear me, man. How's the, how's the level? I got you. Okay, okay. Biggie came on the show and was like, don't hold no punches, man. You got to step to everything. You got to step to everything. And then my man went crazy on the lyrics, man. I, I've never talked over a freestyle in my life. And it was the first time where I took a breath while he was rhyming because I was like, man, this cat pocket just passed. Yeah. And this dude is rhyming like no problem. And and, and we were in the West Coast, and at that time, Pac was like Jesus out here, man. Absolutely. And a lot of cats were offended. And they told me the next day if that, and me and Big were real cool. They told me, man, if that's really your boy, you got to get him out of town. Like, they li literally told me. Yeah, like, L.A.'s yeah. looking for him. And I tried every which way to uh, contact him, and I found out through one of his people that he had gone back to New York. And then, as you, uh, you know, people know that Puffy invited him back to L.A. for one more party, and then everything went down. So that's why I get nervous of uh, just letting, you know, just saying, hey, we can talk about well, whatever, you know, whatever, you know. We ain't, we ain't really got that problem with me. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you have to worry about that. Uh... I knew when I heard that Biggie was in L.A. that that was a bad move. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. At that time, because, you know, uh, dudes were still steaming. Nobody really knew what happened to Pac. And, uh, you know, L.A. is a vengeance town. Right, right. So, you know, all that all that plays a part. But, you know, what I'm doing... Uh, well, that's why I'm, I'm coming to you. I'm saying I, I get nervous because I know you were dealing with some heavy government cats. And all of a sudden, we start talking about all that. And, and then all of a sudden, three days later, you're like, Tech, why'd you say all that, man? I, I jumped <laughs> off. So how free well, you are know you what? open to talk, I'm, man? I'm wide open. I mean, you know, what happened with the government it has been ex exposed already, and, and I'm not the one that exposed it. You know, I was privileged to, to the conversation, just like uh, everybody else. So, you know, let's let's go, man. Let's go as far as oh, we okay. can. Okay, okay, man. So let's let's start in, in, the, in the youth, man. So now you're 10 years old. What's going through your mind, man? When you you know, because I I know at some point you had to want to come up real fast. Oh man, like everybody else, you know, right. when you growing up in South Central at the time when I was growing up, man, uh, you know, the gangs were just starting. Okay. You know, Big Took was the man. Him and uh, uh, Raymond Washington. I was privileged enough, you know, when I was a kid to see them. Right. Uh, uh, while I was growing up, so you know, I looked up to those cats, and and Crippin was something that I wanted to do at the time. Uh, but my mom was one of them, one of them old Christian ladies, and she wasn't going for it. Right. So, uh, 
about 13 years old, I started playing tennis. So that that kept me out of the gang banging. But my younger brothers got so into tennis. It. Tennis kept oh, me out okay. of gang banging. Man. Okay, okay. But my younger brothers wasn't fortunate enough as I was to pick up the tennis racket, and and they actually joined the gang and and were diehard Crips. Okay, and maybe still are at 50 years old. <laughs> but uh, uh, I missed that, you know, and 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 that was partially behind tennis. And so, then what? So what happened? Well, you go from tennis, man, and then what happens one day? Man. I messed up in school. You know, I never learned how to read or write. I didn't learn how to read or write till I was sitting in the penitentiary uh, with a life sentence. And uh, I figured that if I was going to get out of prison, I had to get myself out. Right. And uh, I went from there, learned how to read, went back to school, you know, learned how to do law. And here I am now sitting at the Wake Up Show. So how did, where did the name Freeway Rick Ross come from? Man, you know, when you growing up in South Central, there was a lot of Ricks. So I stayed by the freeway and... and Oh, they started the, saying Rick to stay by the free, but when the police and the news and all these other people get, they put right. a whole new twist on it. But it wasn't really like that, you know, when it when it first started. It was just the guys in the neighborhood. Right. You know, that was a fat Rick, a skinny Rick. <laughs> Rick stayed by the freeway. A lot of so Ricks. It was a lot of Ricks. So. Well, you know, let's go to current events right now, man. The first thing is now you locked up and you're hearing about this cat named Rick Ross who took your name. Now, I'm going to give y'all the, the hip-hop version of what I think is that maybe... You know, same thing that happened with 50 Cent, because, you know, if the, you know, in, in some ways, uh, you got to notice, man, a lot of cats look up to you. Some people may not look up to you, but a lot of cats are like, yo, man, that's the OG. He I put get it mad down. respect. I get yeah. mad respect. Exactly. Man, and, and, so maybe, and I'm just, you know, maybe part of it was respect level. Like, yo, man, he was the kingpin. He was the biggest that did it. I'm just going to take his name. And and like 50 Cent did that with a uh, with a cat out of New York. Right. I and then later that. on we found out, oh, that's not the real 50 Cent. There was another 50 Cent. Um, I mean, I mean, I look at what he did, and and as a businessman, you know, it was a smart move. He called a name that was already hiding the streets. Right. And uh, uh, somebody that he thought was gone. You know, he thought I was buried. Right. You know, and and at times I thought I was buried too. You know, right. I didn't know if I was gonna ever. You know, we in the pen, and you got that life sentence. You say you're the Walking Dead. So. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to ever get out, you know, and he probably figured that I was never going to get out and he was banking that I would never get out. And uh, he snatched the name and, and maybe it was out of respect. But at the same time, he hasn't shown respect right now today, you know, with me being here and, and, and walking the streets. I don't think that he's came at me the way he should have came at me. Now, if he would have came to you and said, man, look, here's a hundred grand for using your name. You know, I got mad respect for you. Just let me let me use it. What would happen? I probably would have said no. <laughs> if I would have said no? <laughs> Maybe so. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 my name is worth more than 100 grand to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I made this name. When I went into the dope business, I went into the dope business to make a name for myself. Right. You know, I didn't want to be uh, uh, Little Took or right. Little Raymond. You right. know, I wanted to be Rick Ross. Right. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to make my own name for myself and to show that I was my own man. You know, right. when you're wearing another man's name, are you really a man or, you know, you live in a, uh, in a mask, you know, behind somebody else? Right. You know, behind, you know, what he done and what he accomplished right. and not what you've accomplished. And which right now, the guy's accomplished a lot on his own. You know, uh, uh, I think right now you would say, you know what, the hell with that. I done got in. I, I put yeah. it off. You know, now I'm going to stand on my own two feet and I'm going to be William Roberts. I'm going to make my dad proud of me because I don't know how his dad could be proud of him. Uh when he named himself if my son named himself after another man and I'm still here living live and healthy I would I would feel a little you know disrespected I mean, yeah yeah I yeah. mean what did I do wrong you know how did I not uh, live up to make my son proud of me right you know and the thing about it is like you're saying man he's at a level now where I, I think that's just a rap game you know what I mean where you have to figure out who to be when you come in because uh, we later on found out he was a correctional officer and never was a was, a, was an <laughs> inmate at all yeah but yeah. he knew that if he came out as a CO out the gate everybody would be like ah you know exactly because that's the current state of the mentality of people that listen to hip hop is like yo man if you ain't real if it ain't real but I think you know uh, me and Crooked I talked about this one time that I really think that the West Coast, you know, you know, we've been hurting out here for for artists for for a while. We have absolutely, you know, maybe two or three that really popped in the past ten years, and I think that when Biggie and Pac passed away, 
I think the the world, including all the labels, kind of put us under punishment in a weird way. Like, damn, these cats are really real with it out there. Like, yeah. we thought it was like some media hype and people were getting killed. <laughs> but... Yeah, well, they didn't know that the gangs out here are real. You know, dudes out here don't play. And a lot of other places, you know. Uh, right. They got guys that don't play, but there are some people that, that play with this lifestyle and right. don't really know that, you know, guys go to prison for life and, you know, guys go to the graveyard. So, uh, definitely, L.A. is one of those places that, that don't play. All right, I want to come back, talk to you a little bit more, man. Hey, man. pull the record back real quick. We're going to come back, talk more with Freeway Rick Ross. Man, the we can OG. talk all night, man. All you. night, baby. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. One, two, one, two, world famous wake up show. We are now in the studio, mm. my man, Freeway Rick Ross, yeah. the OG. We talked about the other Rick Ross, man. So, is uh, you know, we got to kind of close it on that one. Is it, What is going to happen with that whole situation, man? man? How do you uh, feel about me? I is want it, my name it, back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I got a court date set up, you know, where I'm trying to get my name back. I got a big law firm that helped me because he got Universal behind him. You know they, oh, they, he's trying to keep the name? He's trying to keep the name, man. Oh, hey, that's not right, man. Yeah, he's trying to keep the name, you know. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, now he's saying it's his name, you know. Yeah, he made it. Uh, somewhere wow. I heard him on, I think it was Power 106 or one of the radio stations, and he said that I should be happy that he used my name. You, you, obviously, you're not happy, man. Not at all. I mean, you know, uh, how can I be happy if, if you took my car and I see you drive my car around and I'm walking? I right, know. right. And the thing is, like you said, man, a lot of people had counted you out the game completely. Right. But let's talk about the, the present day right now where you actually are coming back into the inter- oh, entertainment man, I'm game finna, heavy. I'm finna do it, man, like so it ain't never it down, been there man. before. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I built a website while I was in jail, freewayenterprise.com. Uh, this is a website. You know, it's, it's based on a Facebook, MySpace type of platform for artists to, uh, to launch their careers. You know, uh, and I'm doing a movie right now. I got Nick Cassavetti who just wrote my uh, script. Script is sick. Whoa. Uh, he's going to direct it. That's the cat from uh, what Blow. Movie? Blow. Yeah, Blow. He was a screenwriter? or a screenwriter okay. for Blow, okay. Alpha Dog, uh, The Notebook. Okay. Uh, Nick's sick. You know how, how real are you going to keep the, your life story? I kept, it, I kept it pretty real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the movie's not all the way about me because there's a lot of government involvement in what I had and right. what I done. You know, right. I thought that, that, that I did it all by myself. Right. But uh, when I went to court and all the paperwork came out, I found out I had some, some sources that was unknown to me uh, that was in the White House. You right. Know, guys right. like Ronald Reagan and, and George W. Bush Sr., uh, Oliver North. So uh, these are like you know this is the 80s we talking about now right yeah, now right? 1985 yeah. 86 80 where it started in like 81 80 80 right. it blew my mind to find out that my arms ran that far you know yeah. I'm thinking that 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 you know I'm a local local cat you know right here in South Central Los Angeles right. you know making moves and, and and making things happen but then when you find out that these guys are behind the whole movement you said Ronald Reagan George W. Bush. George w. Bush, Oliver North. That's the Iran Contra scandal, or what, that's what, it. You you hit it right on the head. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what they was doing? They was taking the money from the arms, giving it to these cats to buy drugs. And then the drugs would come to you, or you would give to it me. to them, or uh, no? They was giving me the drugs. They guys that they were getting getting the drugs for were giving me the drugs. And then what was what was in it for them? Well, they they wanted to win a war. You know, they was trying to keep out uh, uh, the Sandinistas out of Nicaragua. They, right. they felt that if the Sandinistas took over Nicaragua, then uh, uh, communists would attack America and, and everybody in America would become communists. Oh, that communist thing. Yeah. yeah everybody, yeah. yeah. They, they, they wasn't having that. So that's really how the cocaine and crack epidemic got sparked in America. And let me ask you a question, man. I, this is the psyche I always want to know, man, because, you know, like, I, you know, I got a couple of nice things here and there, man. At some point, I'm like, I'm cool with this $500 watch. I'm cool. Yeah. I'm cool with this. Man, what point did you get to where you had to, you know, why didn't you at some point have to, like, set a benchmark? Like, yo, man, when I hit $10 million, I'm out. Well, you know, once it start coming and you're not really doing anything, you know, but giving orders. You know, like, I didn't see drugs. I didn't really see money. Uh, all I did was got numbers. And, and spent money So it, it's like You're not really doing anything But just giving orders You know You pick up a phone call And the guy says Hey man I need 20 keys So you figure Okay I'm gonna make 200,000 Off of that 300,000 uh, Hey Go deliver these 20 keys to him 
Right. So it wasn't like you were hopping in a van and start driving around. Oh, and, and, nah, and, and, yeah. nah, nah, nah. And I felt that there was no way they could catch me. You know, I didn't know that, that the feds use uh, informants and that they didn't have to find drugs and, 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 and things like this. You know, when you're out there selling, you're thinking that they got to catch you with drugs in a bag while you're walking down the street or you're in a car. Right. Um, but that's not the case. You know, what, what they did is they went back through my past and say, okay, this day you sold X amount of drugs. You sold 20 keys to this guy, you sold 50 to this guy, 10 to this guy, and they add it up. And right. They say, oh, you did this for five years. Right. And and that's how, that's how they give you a case. So, I mean, a lot of people, you know, thought that you were kind of set up. That, well, I was. That, yeah, you in was a, a scapegoat in, in a way. And uh, I was, in a way, but but at the same time, you know, uh, 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 I you, played a part. You know what I'm saying? I, I got out. Nobody put a gun in my head and tell me to go out there and sell drugs. I wanted to be in the drug game. You know, I wanted to build a name for myself. Uh, you know, I felt like, like William Roberts did, like the rapper. You right. know, I didn't have a name. I was a nobody. Right. So I was going to take cocaine and make me a name for myself. You know, just like he took Rick Ross and made a name for himself. Right. I was going to do it with cocaine. Let me ask you a question, man. And, and, and this is, I asked Ron DMC this before, too. What was your highest high? Meaning not, not actually being high, but like the highest high of like what you was doing. And what was your lowest low? To this point of your life, oh man, just just to be able to go around the neighborhood, man, and help people out. You know, to see people come up and say, "Hey, man, you know, I'm, I'm about to lose my house, I'm about to get kicked out," and to be able to give them twenty five hundred dollars, three thousand, five thousand dollars, if I wanted to. You know, that's like the ultimate. You know, just to be able to help people that need help. You know, so you saying? wasn't like stashing it all away just for you. You kind of felt like Robin Hood in a weird way. Yeah, I mean. I look at it like this here, man. What good is to have money if you can't help the people you love? Right. You know, if you're just going to be rich and live on the hill and drive 20 cars, but then all the other people that you're around, they're doing dirt ball bad, they can't buy food, you know what I mean, you know, is it really worth it? Or are you really rich? But is, what was that, what, what did the cocaine turn into crack and didn't it eventually affect the community that you was trying to help oh, out absolutely. in a weird way? I mean, it's kind of like a weird circle. Absolutely. But you know, when you get involved, sometimes we trying to accomplish one goal, not knowing the end results. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I got involved with cocaine, you know, just like since I've been doing this movie and, and, and stuff, you know, stuff has come out that, you know, back in that time, there was actors that put in their contract, you got to have cocaine on the set for me. You know, that was in their contract. So it was looked at differently at that time. It wasn't looked at, you know, the crack moms and and people being strung out and, and that type of situation. You right. know, we looked at it as a glamorous party, you know, uh, uh, type of situation. Right. And I guess my lowest low would be in court when the judge gave me that life sentence and hit the hammer and I saw how it affected my mom. You know, it really broke my mom down. Uh, and, and you look at it like, well, damn, you know, I was doing this to... To help you You know what I'm saying I right. wanted you to have The things right. that I know you needed When I was growing up You know right. and, and and To hurt The ones you love When you're trying to help them Is, is, is really hurting So uh, that was probably My lowest point in, in my life is, is that day When the judge hit that hammer and, and told me that I was going to spend The rest of my life in prison Hey we talking to uh, The original Freeway Rick Ross Right now World famous wake up show we're going to come right back. Pull it back, man. Dynamics in the studio with me. Pull it back. <laughs> one, two, one, two, world famous wake up show. I got my man DJ Dynamics hooking me up tonight, man. We got the original Freeway Rick Ross in the building, man. We're going through his history right now. We found out he wants his name back. We found out his highest highs, high, lowest <laughs> low. And then let me just ask you a question, man. At your, you know, what was the most money you made in, in like one week, man? Like, what was it? Man, man, man. I done had days I made $3 million. Say, uh, wait, wait, wait. Say it again, man. I done had days I make $3 million, man. So In one day? One day, one day. I went through a lot of money. I mean, uh. Well, what, well, okay, so what happened? <laughs> the prosecutor said, what'd he say? Uh, in two years, he said I made like 600 something million dollars in, in two years one time, so. Man, okay, now I gotta ask you, man. What could you possibly keep six hundred million dollars? No, no, no. I didn't. I didn't keep it. This was the money that that rolled over. Oh, okay. In a uh, uh, in the buying drugs and you know in the whole little circle. Right. You know, it's like a cycle that you go through. You know, we don't get to keep all the money. Right. But uh, this is the kind of money that would come through my hands on a daily basis. You know, like I would make a million dollars, but I would have to turn some of it in. 
So you like a businessman, really, man. Because, you know, when people think of you, I'm thinking of guns, shootouts, you know, the blood and cripping, just out there acting, you know, whatever about my money. Man, we but had L.A. We had L.A. on lock, man. We're no, we're no, we're no killing so you were no killing going on. So you were like a McDonald's enterprise in a way. Like, exactly. you were like, I got homes and I got, I'm going to do a... Do a Places where people can go Am I correct? Or? Absolutely absolutely, And that's what really Killed me about the whole thing Because they want to relate The drugs to the violence But that's not That wasn't the case I mean when we started Selling drugs This was the first time That you could see a crip On a blood's block You know what I'm saying And they getting along Because they working They trying to get money And when you're trying to get money You don't want no violence You don't want the killing And, and the police coming around You know Because that right. interrupts Your cash flow Right So uh I mean, I mean, that might have been the drug game, might have been the first peace treaty to show that, that it really could be a peace treaty. Well, but why did it break out to a you know, whole Cold War, man? Like, well, you took, when they, when, they, when they sucked all the players out, then they left a void that was open. You know, uh, so when we went to MDC, man, all the guys that, that we grew up with were all in jail. You know, we all sitting inside this, uh, uh, this high rise downtown, uh, you know, looking at long times. You know, guys like Harry O, Bo Bennett, uh, Pat Johnson from Compton, Hancho, uh, you know all the players. You know right. we're all downtown. So uh, when when they sucked this vault out, then they left a gap inside, and, and you know, and guys got to fighting over it. Let me let me ask you, man. Did, did you ever fear for your life? Not not from the streets, but more from the the government side at all, man. Oh. I mean, because uh, you just named some. The last segment you talked talking about George W. Bush and well, you know the cops done shot at me many times. You know, but I've been fortunate enough that none of them hit me. But I've been shot at by the cops, what, two, maybe three times. And the reason was what? And they don't like me, I guess. You know what I'm saying? I, I never sit around the axe. Uh, right. But uh, I've been shot at by them. Yeah, I had bullets whizzed by my head. And, and, and like you said, it's from the authority, uh, from the streets. I mean, the streets just love me, man. I don't know why I get so much love from the streets. But, uh, you know, I go in any hood right now. Across the country, you know, and, and they just embrace me and, 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 you know, they understand my plight. You know, they understand where I come from because a lot of those cats are coming from the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Grew up with nothing and, and, and want to make something out of it for themselves. And a lot of times, unfortunately, in our neighborhood, the first opportunities that we have is crime. Mm. Why is that, you think? Well, I think that the people, the, the power that be, don't really want us. You know what I'm saying? You need poor. You know, you need... Uh, underclassmen to, to, to do the dirty work You know If everybody was equal Then who would do the dirty work So You know They want us to stay poor They want us to stay ignorant You know what I'm saying They don't want us to get educated And, and to learn How to work How to make the system work for us Instead of us working for the system Got you Got you man And let me Let me ask you this man If you can go back in time Now that you know all this Do you think you would have Followed the same path If you had all this information In your brain right now As a, as a 14 year old kid Absolutely not, man. What I know right now, but I mean, you can only get this two ways, you know what I'm saying? You can grow through it like I did, or somebody can take you and teach it to you. You know, unfortunately, I didn't have anybody to teach me. You know, I had to learn the hard way. I had to get hit in the head with, with bats and running the brick walls and, and get hit by cars before I picked it up, you know. And, and one of the things that I want to do right now and what I'm doing with my life is teaching you know what I'm saying? Our younger people, you know, uh, how to watch out for these brick walls and these bats because they still out here and there's still people that will put them on you if you don't know what you're doing. Wow, man. You got a deep story, homie. So this is all going to be in the movie? Man, the movie going to be deep, man. Uh, so are you going to expose the W. Uh, Bush and the no, CIA absolutely. and all that? Why not? Why not? You know what I'm saying? They did what they did. Uh, you know, Ronald Reagan's getting libraries. Why should I get a library then? If y'all going to give him a library... You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Oliver North got a, a, a talk show. He got a presidential pardon. You know, Congress found him. They found him guilty. But uh, 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 Bush gave him a pardon. You know, why he didn't give me a pardon? You know, why somebody don't give me a pardon? I played a part in it. Right. I was just as much in, in their operation as they was. I just wasn't knowledgeable enough to know to go up in the White House and, and, and get in with the good old boys. You know what I'm saying? Right. I stayed in the hood. But at the same time, my cash took care of what they was trying to take care of. So, you know... They need to look out for me too. There it is, man. Yo, we're gonna come right back. Freeway Rick Ross. <laughs> Breaking it down. My man got a movie coming out. You got an entertainment business about to crack, man. Book, so, you know. Book. Check out freewayenterprise.com, uh, freewayrickross.com. 
Uh, man, man, man. I got y'all, though. You know what I'm saying? Y'all support me. I support you. Well, you got, we got somebody about to call in in a hot second, man. So, yo, D, pull that, uh, pull that record back. We're going to come Who right back. Who is that? Who I is don't that? know. I don't know. Surprise, guess. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. One, two, one, two, world famous wake up show. I got a Blackberry in my hand on speakerphone, my man Warren G. You know, we got Freeway Rick Ross in here, man, and not the cat from uh, the East Coast, the OG. And we got the OG Warren G on the <laughs> phone. What up, man? Can you hear me? What up, though, man? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, we got the OG in the studio, man. You want to say something? What up, Rick? What up, Juan? What's up, baby? That's my man. You know, Juan. I'm just chilling, just chilling, just chilling, man. Just working, producing it. Hey, hey, Warren, man. man. Get, you know, Warren, give me, give me some. Uh, you know, let's ask you, man. What's this man's legacy in the in the hood, in your opinion, man? What is it now? What's this man's legacy in the hood, in your opinion? Freeway Rick Ross. What the man's legacy? Yeah, like, you know, when you guys bring him up, man, I mean, I'm talking like 5, 10, 15 years ago. What did y'all used to say, man, about him? Man, he was the man. The man, you know, <laughs> that's all he used to hear, you know, the man around the hood. You know, I, I, was, I used to be doing my thing, and I'm like, damn, I'll be scared to get to that level. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, what did you think when, yeah. uh, when you heard, um, the other freeway Rick Ross come out? I mean, did you instantly know that he had jacked his name or did it take a minute to figure out or, or what did you think? Well, um, I mean, I didn't know that, you know, that, that it, it, you know, that, it, that uh, I guess he had, you know, I, I, I didn't know that he had took the name or I'm, I just assumed that, you know, that they knew each other and then all, and then I, I was assumed, I assumed that, that he was looking up to, to, uh, Rick Ross, sort of like how Biggie Smalls got his name from Biggie Smalls from up out of, out of, uh, Uptown, I think it was Uptown Saturday Night, or Let's Do It Again, one of those. So that's the way, the way I've seen it, you know. You thought Cause he, he You know, cause like, you got, like, like Snoop. He called himself Snoopy. After the dog Snoopy, but his mom did, you know what I'm saying? Or you have, you know, like Eminem is, is after, you know, named Eminem, but I think that he just really, Rick Ross, the, the uh, rapper Rick Ross, uh, really looks up to to the, the OG Rick Ross, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's just how I see it, you know what I'm saying? Now, I know, I, I, you know, everything else I don't get into, but... Right. <laughs> but... I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a dude that, 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 you know, that, that, that was, that was huge, huge, you know, to me when I was young, like, that was just, a, that was a trip, like, wow, this guy, this is a black guy, and he's doing it, you know, he's doing it big, you know, and, and I mean, that's, that's how, you know, that's, that's just how I, I put it down, but, it, you know, he, you know, he's a, he's a cool cat, you know, uh, paid his debt to, to society and turned his life around and you know just using you know the stuff that the, the stuff that he had to go through turning around and making it positive for the kids and making you know steering them in the right path so they don't go you know doing this or doing that and doing that because he didn't been through it and he didn't seen that and that's the same that's the same way you know I, I ain't a, a major G like Rick Ross I'm still you know I'm young but Real young, not that he old, but I'm just a younger, younger cat. Um, but man, you know, I, I really love the things that he do. You know, he goes and he speaks to these kids in the inner cities and, and really, really show them, give them game on, on how they're supposed to, to, to make it in life, but in a positive way. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Yeah. That's from man Warren G Thanks, calling Warren. in. Thanks, baby. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, Warren, Warren is, is a real dude, man. He's one of the cats that while I was locked down, they reached out to me. You know what I'm saying? They showed wow. love. Absolutely. Wow. So, you know, that's from man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And had, haven't stopped. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was saying about dude. And I can understand if dude showed me respect. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, he's in a position that... Uh, 
he could have reached out, you know what I'm saying, and gave a dude a hand up off the ground, right. you know, when the dude walked up out them gates and needed a hand, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. Instead of, uh, you know, getting on the radio, fat mouthing about me being down on my luck and... Whoa. And, I didn't know about all that. <laughs> it's all good, boy. Though. It ain't, you know. That's 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 between me and him, you know. They gonna work it out, man. Absolutely. They gonna work it out. Hey, Warren, we gonna hit you later, brother. Yeah. All right. I definitely, I definitely, you know, I, I know if, if they work it out, boy, the, the, the connection is gonna be so huge. Yeah. Know, between the two, you know what I'm saying? That that that'll be a real good connection, man. So I hope things do work out, man. Yeah, yeah, we gonna work it out. We gonna get it worked out because you know what I'm saying it's the right thing to do. Maybe, maybe oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Tech oh, yeah. putting this thing together. Maybe Tech can put it all together. I'm gonna put it all saying? together, man. We do it right here on the Wake Up Show. We, we come right here, Warren. You come on the show, all of us together, and we will put that thing together. Hey. It's all good. All right, all right, oh, yeah. all right, Warren. We gonna hit you later, man. All right, all right, brother. Peace, right. man. Later, y'all. Yo, Peace. so. I'm sitting here, man, and you got somebody on your left hand side. You got a pair of headphones for my man. Can somebody hook him up real quick? Uh, now, what's your what's your role in all this, man? I know that everybody needs somebody good on their on their side, especially an attorney, man. Like you gotta. Yeah, I'm I'm basically Rick's attorney slash advisor. Um, I'm a former district attorney out, out here in L.A. You know, met Rick out with another client. I've been doing entertainment law for about three years. Rick's a wonderful guy. We kind of clicked. Right. Working on the movie, working on a lot of different projects for our, our uh, major enterprise, which is Freeway Studios. So you guys, okay, you about to start signing artists and and. No, not it's, it's not necessarily just about about a, a label project. Things right. have really expanded. You know, we're really trying to take the movie and the documentary and expand out to do more motion pictures. Right. Oh, motion pictures. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay, and, how, and y'all just hooked up from what? Uh, we were actually at the Conga Room. Jamie Foxx's thing down at the Foxhole. Right. I was there because I have another client that's working with Jamie Foxx. Right. And Rick was there. Uh, he was outside trying to uh, coming in, and uh, you know we we talked in there. This is maybe about a year ago. Yeah. Not, maybe about ten months ago, and we just been clicking ever since. You know, working working on this project, getting out here, meeting people from uh, actors to producers to movie producers, and just uh, trying to make this thing happen. This movie. Wow, man. And what's, what, oh, so what's the name of the movie? Any, any titles? Not yet. Untitled. Not yet. And let me ask you, Rick, was, was you ever portrayed in any movies without you? I guess you might have known it, but nobody else knew it. Yeah, I've been I've been portrayed in a, a few movies, a few uh, uh, video games. I found out when I was in, in, in jail, uh, this kid wrote me and said, man, you know you in a video game called uh, Grand Theft Auto. And I was like, what? So he said, he sent me the transcripts and it was a cat named Smokey. And uh, he did some of the same things that I was doing. So I was like, wow. And then there was another movie that came out by the name of 100 Kilos that uh, portrayed me. Um, <clears throat> I think that's about it that I, that I know of that's been brought to my attention. Right, because I think people are just like, hey, we love, we love to take his story and do something with it quick while he's not out. Yeah, yeah. But I think those are the only ones, you know. But, you know, been so many rappers that, that uh, you know, mention my name in raps and, and, and whatnot that... You know, it's crazy. So, so in closing, man, you know, where you at right now, man? Physically, mentally, are you are you man, back? Are you charged? I I'm mean, on, are you blessed? Man, just I'm, on, I'm on a new plane, man. You know, I went from being uh, illiterate to, to reading over 300 books while I was down. You know, so I educated myself. I'm well educated right now. Uh, I really don't think that these people really know how to deal with me yet. You right. know, they haven't found a guy that they can't buy. You know, I'm not for sale. Right. You know, I don't care how much money you got, you can't buy me. Because the money don't impress me. You know, the kind of money that these guys uh, uh, worship and treasure, you know, we, we threw it around back in the days. Right. You know, it wasn't enough for us to, to go out and, and, and spend, you know, a hundred grand on motorcycles or, or just whatever we wanted. You know, take a trip and, and take the whole neighborhood. You know, that's how we live. You know, we live, you know, easy come, easy go, as they right, say. Right, right. So, you know, I can't be bought. You know, I'm not for sale, uh, and, and, and I'm just happy right now. You know, uh, 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 everything that I uh, that I dreamed about, you know what I'm saying, uh, dreams can't come true. You know, just like you see me right now at the Wake Up Show, you know, right. I sent, I sat in my cell when I was in the penitentiary and thought about being here on the show with you, man. That's what's up. So, uh, here Thank I you. am today, and, uh, you know, I, I plan on going far, you know, and, and, and to help heal our community, because I think that it needs somebody like me, you know, uh, that can talk both languages. You know, I can go and talk to uh, the guys up in the high rise and then I can go to the penitentiary. 
and Juvenile Hall and, and relate to those guys as well and, and everybody in between. So, uh, How do people get a hold of you guys, man, for anything? We have a website? Uh, yeah. Well, basically, we have FreewayRick.com. That's where you can add his Facebook, his Twitter. Then he also has FreewayEnterprise.com where you can come, sign up. You can uh, be part of a new social network that we're trying to set up to, um, to expand outwards. Okay. You know. And they can send me CDs, too. You know, I'm looking for... I'm, I, I, I'm looking for artists. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody special, though. I mean, not... You know, not these guys that that standing out here like everybody want to go in the studio for 15 minutes and cut a record and then want everybody to listen to it. Right. Uh, they can send they can send their CDs to me at uh, P.O. Box 11173, Carson, California, 90749. Uh, and address it to Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? I'll check you out and see if you got something. If you got something working with it, holler. Can you put that somewhere on the website too so people could just, if they you know they missed it, they could just go to the website and go, man, you know, is, is the address up there? I'll add it to freewayrick.com in the contact section. There it is, man. All right, world famous wake up show, man. This man. is like a dream come true. Love, love, both love. Both ways, man. You know love, what I'm saying? Love, like, love. Yeah, man. So it's like, congratulations on everything, man. I hope you're very successful in what you do. Man, let me give a shout out to Nate Dog and his people, man. You know what oh, I'm wow. saying? Oh, wow. Yeah, rest in peace, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to miss Nate. You know what I'm saying? He's one of the trailblazers to this West Coast. Absolutely. Peace. The OG legend, man. You know? Yeah. yeah. Check what out I, to everybody. Make sure that you watch out for the movie. It's a mix between Traffic, Blow, and Boys in the Hood. It's going to be wild. Wow. That sound crazy, man. Yes, sir. All right, man. Thanks for coming, yeah. man. World famous Wake yeah, Up Show. Give a shout out to my son, Jamal. He's standing right here with me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's going to be the next mogul. Y'all watch out for him. Uh, he's yeah. starting from the ground. You know what I'm saying? He ain't been privileged to, uh, uh, to get no hand up. He's, he's, he's grinding his way up to the top. And I love him for it. You know what I'm saying? He ain't asking for no handouts. He said, Dad, I want to earn it. You know, just let me hang out, and I'm going to get in. I think he's going to be your A&R guy in a minute, man. I'm yeah. telling you, man. He got his ear to the street right now. <laughs> there it is, man. World famous wake-up show. We got to get out of here, man. Thanks for coming through. As usual, I want to say peace. Dynamics, pull the record back. We out of here, man. World famous. Rick Ross. 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 Rick Ross.